So air show season is now upon us and if you're getting into aviation photography you might be wondering what lens to use to get some great aircraft photos. Stick around because in this short video I'm going to show you an amazing lens to seriously consider if you want to take some great air show Make photos. Make sure to 2-4-0, I was at you 5-1-3, Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and I'm talking about aviation photography again today. And I'm going to tell you about a lens that you might want to seriously consider as your first aviation or airshow specific lens. Now I'm telling you about this because I firmly believe that this has got to be one of the best kept secrets for taking aircraft photos. It's fantastic and it's relatively cheap, but more on that in a short while. If you're a beginner or if you're fairly new to the world of aviation photography, you will hopefully already know that you should be aiming for a lens that has a minimum focal length of about 400 millimeters. 400 and 600 millimeters, I would suggest, are the sweet spots for aviation lenses. But you'll also know that these lenses can be heavy and expensive. So the usual suspects are the Canon 100 to 400 Mark II for about 2,200 uh, pounds, the uh, Sigma Contemporary 150 to 600 for about 850 pounds, or the Tamron 150 to 600 for about 1,000 pounds. Now, all of these lenses are big zooms, so what you do get is incredible flexibility and versatility with them. But if they're a bit out of reach for you, or you are maybe wondering about other options, I'm going to recommend this. This is a Canon 400mm Prime. It's simple and straightforward. It has no bells and whistles, but my god does it produce incredibly good images. Now, I've been shooting aircraft for many, many years, and I will take this lens over a 150 to 600 super zoom every single time, no question. If you're new to this channel, thanks for stopping by, and please help me out and hit that subscribe button, and ring the notification bell too for more aviation photography content. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up too. So let's break it down. It's a 400 millimeter prime lens, so that means it doesn't zoom. It's fixed at 400 millimeters, which is decent enough to get you close to the airshow action without being too close, which actually requires even better panning skills. So I think 400 millimeters is a good starting point if you're new to aviation photography. And because that's all it does, happily taking pictures all day long at just 400 millimeters, it's finely tuned to do that one thing incredibly well. So the image quality is outstanding. Contrast, color and sharpness are all incredible. You simply wouldn't get such a high level of image quality with a zoom lens. Now I've had this lens for a couple of years now and even I'm surprised just how good this lens is. The picture quality just blows me away every time I use it. Now if you don't already know, this lens is a white Canon lens with a red ring on it, which means it's L-series glass. So that means it's from the Canon uh, professional range of lenses. So you know that the image quality is going to be absolutely top draw, and it's built like a tank, and, uh, and it can take plenty of abuse. The autofocus is fast, snappy, and accurate, and the f5.6 aperture is good enough for airshow action. It has a built-in metal lens hood, which is actually really quite convenient, and it just slides up and twists to lock into position. And it also comes with a tripod foot too, if you want to use it. But the great thing about this lens is it's really light. It weighs in at just 1200 grams, or just over two and a half pounds. That's substantially lighter than any of the other options. Okay, so what are the downsides of this lens? I actually don't think there are any, but perhaps a more suitable question would be, what compromises am I making to use this lens? Well, the obvious one is that it doesn't zoom. But to be honest, if you're shooting with a big zoom at an air show, you may well be zoomed out to 400 millimeters or more most of the time anyway. But keep in mind that to shoot larger aircraft, you might want to shoot them when they're further away from you. I suppose the biggest shortcoming is the lack of image stabilization, but image stabilization won't really help you when you're shooting fast moving aircraft anyway. 
Instead, you should be concentrating on selecting the right shutter speed to freeze the action. As a beginner with this lens, I'd suggest you should be using something like a minimum of 1 1600th of a second for fast jets, certainly on a crop sensor body. In fact, to help you out with your camera settings, I made a video which you might actually find really useful. There's a link up here, and I'll put one at the end of this video too, so be sure to check that one out. Now, here's the surprise. It's actually an old lens. The design is about 30 years old, and they don't make them anymore. My one was made in 2014, but there's loads on the second-hand market, especially somewhere like MPB. I'll put a link in the description below and I think it's an absolute bargain. You should be able to get all of this for about 560 pounds for an excellent used example. So why do I think this lens is the best kept secret in aviation photography? Well, the image quality is simply staggering and I honestly don't think you can get that level of image quality in any other lens for that price. By all means, look at the Sigma and Tamron 150 to 600 super zooms and maybe the Canon 100 to 400, but this is another option you may not have considered. It's an incredible lens and I thought you should know about it because I absolutely love mine. So if you're off to any air show soon to shoot aircraft for the first time, good luck, enjoy yourself and I hope you get some great shots. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Bye for now.